Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday morning service for September the 20th, I believe. If I'm correct. Yep, September the 20th. <clears throat> because I'm just getting over my cold, I don't want to uh, sing and, and start coughing on you, so I decided just to go ahead and do it on the desk. We're in the book of Mark, chapter 1, the morning service. Mark chapter 1, and I'm going to read verses 35 through 39. Mark chapter 1, verses 35 through 39. The Bible says, And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place, and there prayed. And Simon and they that were with him followed after him. And when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. And he said unto them, Let us go into the next towns, that I may preach there also. For therefore came I forth. And he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee, and cast out devils. Let's pray. Father God, thank you, Lord, for the privilege to be able to share the truth of your word and the gospel message through social media. I pray for those people that are watching and listening near and far. I pray, Heavenly Father, for their salvation. I pray that, Holy Spirit of God, you would speak to their hearts. You would draw people to yourself so that they may be saved. And I pray for every believer, Lord God, that they be strengthened through your holy word. Father God, we, we love you. We thank you, Lord God. And uh, even though we can't be in person, uh, we're still able to share your word, Lord. And I'm thankful of that. Uh, Father God, I pray, Holy Spirit of God, that you guide us and lead us in this message. In Jesus' precious holy name we ask it. Amen. So uh, here, notice that uh, the Lord Jesus Christ says in verse number 38 in the last part, He says, that I may preach, that I may preach there also, for therefore came I forth. He's saying that he came to preach, okay? So in the Old Testament, uh, after, the, uh, after the Old Testament uh, was completed, there were 400 years of silence where, where uh, uh, no one heard from God for 400 years. This is a, it's called the 400 years of silence. And after the 400 years of silence, the New Testament opens up. Uh, the silence is broken by a preacher named John the Baptist who came preaching repentance. In Matthew 3, 1, the Bible says, In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So he came preaching. And Jesus said in our text, For therefore came I forth to preach. Okay? Uh, Jesus arrives on the scene. And what does he do? He begins his ministry by preaching. About verse 38. And he said unto them, Let us go into the next towns that I may preach there also. For therefore came I forth. And he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee. Okay. And so in Matthew 4.17, From that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And so Jesus arrives on the scene and he begins to preach. Why did Jesus come? He came to preach. Why was Jesus sent? According to Luke 4.43, the Bible says, And he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of God in other cities, for therefore I am sent. So he came to preach and he was sent to preach the gospel of the kingdom of God. The word preaching means proclaiming God's word. It means to publish God's word. And what was the common topic of preaching in those days? Well, preaching was on repentance and it has not changed, okay? The preaching has not changed because God still requires that people repent of their sins. That means to turn away from your sins and turn to Jesus. In the book of Ezekiel 18.30, the Bible says, Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, saith the Lord God, 
repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions. So iniquity shall be not, so it shall not be your ruin. God is clearly telling us here in the book of Ezekiel that continuing in sin will ultimately result in your ruin. If you continue living in sin, it will result in your ruin. I will add, it will result in your destruction. Because the wages of sin is death. And so the Apostle Paul, when he came to preach, he also preached on repentance. Repentance. In Acts 5.31, the Bible says, Him had God exalted with His right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Only Jesus can forgive your sins. Okay? Now listen to me clearly. Only Jesus Christ can forgive your sins. Another man cannot forgive your sins. Why is that? Because the Bible says in Romans 3.10, For all have sinned. Okay? There is none righteous, no, not one. And so uh, another man is also a sinner. Why would you confess your sins to another man when he's also a sinner? For all have sinned. No exceptions. All. Every person that has been born in the world is born with a sinful nature, including the priest. And so why would you confess your sins to a priest when he's nothing but another sinner? The only one that can forgive you of your sins is the Lord Jesus Christ. And so only Jesus can cleanse you and forgive your sins with his precious blood that he shed on the cross for you. The Apostle Paul preached on repentance in Acts 20:21. 20, he said, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greek, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, repentance means to turn from your sins, to stop sinning, to turn from your sins and to turn to Jesus Christ for forgiveness of your sins. There is a danger in waiting. There is a danger in waiting because men say, according to 2 Peter 3, 9, this is what people say. <clears throat> 2 Peter 3 9, Peter says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. People think that God is slack. And the reason he said they think he's slack is because he hasn't come back yet. And they say, Well, where is he? He said he was going to return. Where is he? He hasn't come back yet. As some men count slackness, but his long suffering to us word. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The reason God hasn't returned yet is because He's waiting for every person to repent of his or her sins. And and in and, and this waiting, He is showing mercy. He is long suffering. That's merciful to us word. Why is He merciful? Not willing that any should perish. God doesn't want you to die in your sins and go to hell. That's why he's waiting for you to repent. Don't count the patience of God as slackness. It is mercy that he's showing. Have you repented of your sins? Or are you still doing and living in sin? If you're still living in sin, you're in great danger. Because the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back very soon. And if you are still living in sin and you die without being forgiven of your sins, you will go straight to hell to be tormented in the lake of fire for all eternity. Because you waited, because you rejected the message when you heard it. Do not reject the message of the gospel when you hear it. Embrace it. Receive it. Jesus also preached about the kingdom of God. You must be born again, he told Nicodemus, who was a Pharisee, a leader of the Jews. He was uh, one of the high, one of the one of the uh, the priests in the temple. He told them in John three three. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again. 
they cannot see the kingdom of God. That means that unless you are born again, this is talking about a spiritual birth. Unless you are born again, you will not be able to understand spiritual things, spiritual matters. Why? Because 1 Corinthians 2.14 says that the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. You're not able to understand in your natural state, in your sinful state, you cannot receive nor understand the things of God. You must be born again. And this is a spiritual birth. And how are you born again? You are born again when you recognize that you're a sinner. When you ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins and you ask Jesus to be your savior. You are then born again. And then the Spirit of God comes to live inside of you. And then you will have understanding of the things of God. Otherwise, you won't understand. You must be born again to be able to enter into the kingdom of God. So first, you must be born again. And if you're not born again, you cannot see. You're not, you're not able to comprehend. Okay, You're spiritually blind. Unless you're born again, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Okay, You cannot go to heaven unless you're born again. In your sinful state, you cannot go to heaven. Heaven is a holy place. He is not going to let sin go into heaven. You must be forgiven of your sins. You must be made new again in order to be able to go to heaven. Acts 8.12 says, But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. When Jesus speaks about being born again, he's saying that you must have a spiritual birth. You are born again spiritually when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he is the son of God, that he died on the cross to pay for your sins. Not Jesus plus, but Jesus only, Jesus alone. You must place your faith in Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross, where he shed his precious blood for you to pay for your sins. When you believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are born again. And the scripture is fulfilled in 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, a new creation, a new person. All things are passed away. Everything you ever did is forgiven and forgotten. Behold, all things are become new. You're made brand new as if you had never sinned. Okay? Only Jesus can do this. Religion cannot do this. A good life cannot do this. Being kind and generous cannot do this. Only repenting of your sins and asking forgiveness of the Lord Jesus Christ and receiving him as your personal savior. This is the only way to be forgiven of your sins. A man cannot forgive you of your sins for he is a sinner. For all have sinned, for there is none righteous, no, not one. Jesus Christ is God. He's the only one that can forgive you of your sins. Jesus led the way in preaching the gospel message. Jesus is the greatest preacher. In Matthew 4, 23, Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases among the people. The disciples obeyed Jesus and he sent them to preach the gospel in Luke 9, 6. And they departed and went through the towns preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. The Apostle Paul said that he would be miserable if he did not preach the gospel. In 1 Corinthians 9, 6, he says, For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me, yea, woe is, un woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. He was commanded to preach the gospel. He could not stop. Missionaries are sent to preach the gospel and the good news to other nations. In the book of Romans 10, 13, the Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? 
And how shall they believe on him and whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? That's what a missionary is. He's a preacher, but he goes to other nations. And how shall they preach except they be sent? Missionaries are sent by the local churches. And how beautiful, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them to preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. The gospel is known as the good news. What is the gospel? The gospel, the word gospel means good news, a joyful message. The, good, the gospel is the good news. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 1, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. If you keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I deliver unto you first of all that which I also received, how the Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. The gospel has three parts. The first part is that Jesus died, for our sins according to the scriptures. Why did Jesus have to die for our sins when he had no sins of his own? He is holy. He is God. He cannot sin. Why did he have to die on the cross? He died for our sins, for your sins and my sins. He paid for them. That's why he came to die on the cross to pay for our sins. He had no sins of his own and that he was buried. He was buried like people are buried when they die. That's the second part. The third part is that he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. Everything that happened to the Lord Jesus Christ happened according to the scriptures. In other words, it was already written that it should be so. This is how we know that we have the scripture, the word of God in our hands. Because everything that it says, it happened exactly as God said it would happen. This is how we know that we have the word of truth. The gospel is the good news that we don't have to die in our sins. God sent his only begotten son to rescue us from our sins. We can joyfully place our faith in him because death, death could not hold him. He arose on the third day according to the scriptures. Death could not hold Jesus Christ. Why? Because he is God. He defeated death. He arose on the third day. He is alive forevermore. We don't follow a dead God. God is not the God of the dead. He is the God of the living. Our God, the Lord Jesus Christ, is a living God. He was he he had victory over death. Okay? This is the gospel. He died for your sins and mine. He was buried and he rose on the third day according to the scriptures. A lot of what is preached today is not preaching. Okay? The land is filled with motivational speakers and swindlers, corrupt men who are more interested in your money and teaching, teaching you how to have a positive attitude, how to better manage your life how to be more efficient, how to have better outlook in life, how to have more self-esteem. That is not the gospel, and that is not preaching. Sadly, that this is what the people want. This is what the people crave. In the Old Testament, the people did the same thing. The people wanted the prophets not to speak the truth of God's word. They said to the prophets, which say to the seers, see not, and, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. That's what they wanted the prophets to speak. To speak smooth things. And isn't that what people want today? They want the so-called preachers to speak nice things to them. To make them feel good. I'm sorry, I'm not here to make you feel good. I'm here to tell you the truth, that unless you repent of your sins and stop living in sin, you are going to perish and go to the lake of fire and burn for all eternity. This is the truth. In Jeremiah chapter 23, 32, the Bible says, Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams. 
those that prophesy false dreams. God says they're false dreams. Saith the Lord, and do tell them and cause my prophets to err by their lies. They're false dreams and they speak lies. Do not believe them. And by their likeness. Did you see that? God says, and by their likeness. They're, they're so nice and kind and so politically correct. They don't want to harm or hurt anybody's feelings. And by their likeness, God says. Let me show you what God expects of true preachers. Isaiah 58. This is what commands the preachers. True preachers. God says in Isaiah 58, 1, Cry out loud. Spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Does it sound like a be a meek little preacher and don't hurt anybody. Don't step on anybody's toes. Is that what it's saying there? No, it says, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgressions in their house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinance of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. And so they're pretending that they're living right, but they, they're not listening to God's word. They're saying, oh, we want to hear, we want to hear those dreams. And we want you to uh, say nice things to us, speak smooth things unto us. God says, I sent them not nor commanded them. Therefore, they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. Smooth preachers are not going to profit you at all. Those that prophesy dreams, their dreams are lies. Do not believe them. Second Timothy 4, 2, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, with all long suffering and doctrine. God says, Reprove and rebuke and exhort in season and not a season when they like it and when they don't like it. You preach the word of God. Paul told Timothy, preach the word in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. We are living in those days now. People are not enduring sound doctrine. They just want to get along with everybody, they say. We just want to have peace. But after their own lust, so they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. They want to hear what they want to hear, not what God says. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. They want little stories. They want legends. They want uh, drama. They want... Uh, plays, they want concerts, they want all these things, but God says no. Raise your voice like a trumpet and show them their sins. God chose the method of preaching to save sinners. This is the method God chose. Preaching, proclaiming His word. This is the way that God chose. This is the method God chose. Preaching, and, and the message is the message of repentance. Turn from your sins. The gospel, good news that Jesus saves. Okay? This message is not going to change. Till Jesus comes, the message is not going to change. It is the gospel message of the good news. The world changes. Fashions change. Philosophies change. But Jesus remains the same. He is the same yesterday and today and tomorrow. 1 Corinthians 17, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach, Paul said, the gospel, not with wisdom of words, not with flowery words. Lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Those that are dying, those that are dead in their sins and trespasses, think that preaching is foolishness 
And this is the method God chose to save them through preaching. But they think the preaching is foolishness. But we preach Christ crucified. That is the message. Jesus died on the cross to pay for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried and that he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. We preach Christ crucified. And the Jew, unto the Jews a stumbling block. And unto the Greek foolishness. You must repent of your sins and by faith receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. That is the only way. In John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There is only one way. There are not many ways. Jesus says, I am the way. That means there's no other way. Not through religion. Not through a good life, not through kindness, not through money, not through fame, not through concerts, whatever you want to throw in there. Only through Jesus Christ. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. He is the only way. In Acts 4.12, the Bible says, Neither is there salvation and any other. Listen to me. There's no salvation in any other. There's no other way. Jesus is the only way. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. You must repent of your sins. You must receive Jesus as your personal Savior. Nothing else will save you. Not by being good, not by religion, not by good works, not by rituals. You can only be cleansed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Have you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you recognized that you're a sinner on your way to hell? God doesn't want you to go to hell. That's why Jesus came. That's why he died on the cross to pay for your sins. So you don't have to go to hell. You must turn to Jesus and you must turn away from your sins. Receive him as your personal savior. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I, I know that you died on the cross to pay for my sins. Lord Jesus, I want to receive you as my savior. Would you come into my heart, Lord, and save me? And when you ask him, he will save you. Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. You can be saved this morning. Recognize you're a sinner. Humble yourself. Go on your knees. It's a sign of humility towards God. Bow your head. Say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I'm undone without you. Lord, I want to turn from my sins. I repent of them. Lord Jesus, would you please forgive me? And would you come into my heart and save my soul? Ask him that in your own words. And he will do it. And he will make of you a new creation. Listen, I was an alcoholic for over 38 years. I had no hope, no way. I was dying. But my wife told me that I needed to come to Jesus the way I was. And I got on my knees and I asked the Lord Jesus Christ to forgive me of my sins. I knew I was a wicked, vile sinner. I said, Lord, please forgive me, Lord. Please come into my heart. Save me. Help me, Lord. Help me. And I pleaded with the Lord Jesus Christ. When I finished praying, I opened my eyes and everything was new. Everything was new. I was completely sober. That was over 20 years ago. I didn't do it. I didn't do anything. I simply went to Jesus and asked him. And he did it all. What are you waiting for? Don't wait. The, the day is late. Jesus is coming back very soon. If you don't, if you are not forgiven of your sins and you happen to die with your sins, you're going to go straight to hell. Like the man in Luke chapter 16. 
who died and then hell, he opened up his eyes. He closed his eyes here for the last time and then he opened his eyes in hell. And he was in torments, tormented by the flames. You don't want to be like him. Come to Jesus. Don't wait. He's waiting for you. Father God, I thank you, Lord God, for the preaching of your word. I thank you for the prominence of preaching. I thank you, Lord God, for granting us repentance. Thank you for saving my soul. Thank you for saving my family. I pray for my extended family, Lord. My brothers and sisters who still are not saved. My nieces and nephews. My uncles and my aunts. My neighbors. All my friends. Father, I pray for them, Lord, that you have mercy on them and save their souls, Lord. And Father, we do thank you for everything that you're going to do. And we ask these things now, Lord God, in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord bless you. You have a great day.